and we're going to be talking about building sine soda models from a piece of data that we've gotten. And I want to say thanks to NOAA, the National Oceanic uh, Atmosphere Association, NOAA, who have uh, provided us with, uh, or actually this is the courtesy of them, this is the source that we got this information from. So we want to give thanks to that. We're able to, uh, to give us information to be able to to do math problems and study math problems and also be knowledgeable of temperature and uh, forecasts, not only that, hurricanes and all things that are happening in the world today. We want to thank Noah. And the month is going to be represented on the x-axis and the average monthly temperature is going to be in Fahrenheit, that's going to be represented on the y-axis. And we have January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Now, notice we have this sort of matriculation of, uh, of, of days, right? January 1st, January 2nd, January 3rd, January 4th, January 5th, January 2nd, in ascending order, if you will, you see. And of course, our temperature in Fahrenheit is 29 degrees, 29.7 degrees, 33.4 degrees, 39.0 degrees, 48.2 degrees, 57.2, uh, 66.9, 73.5, 71.4, 62.3, 51.4, and 39.0, and 31.0. Okay. However, we're going to take this and we're going to plot these points. And actually, figure 1A shows uh, the pattern, basically. Now, understand that this is not exactly the scale. Because we don't really have graph paper, uh, you know, per se, but this is sketched uh, accordingly, but it's not exactly the scale. So what we want to do is fit a sine function data in actually table one. See, this is table one right here. So we want to fit the sine function to the data in, from that table. And we want to begin by completing a scatter plot, which we have, and uh, we'll be fitted to the sine function of the form. Remember this? y is equal to a times sine omega x minus phi plus b. And step one, what we want to do in this particular case is we want to take the largest data and, and uh, actually subtract it from the smallest data. What does that look like? Remember that in your basic math and statistics courses, that looks like that would be the range, right, of, of temperature, right? So you take this and you're going to divide it by what? Two. So 73. 0.5, which is the hottest temperature on there, minus the, uh, the I believe the coldest temperature in this in this data, and divide that by two, so we come up with uh, 21.9, which is represented by the amplitude. So now we have an idea of what this is, and so y is 21.9 sine x. To see this remaining, see the remaining steps of this process, we want to superimpose the graph of y is equal to 21.9 sine x, where x represents months on the scatter plot. So look at this right here. This is figure 1b, and we tried to actually do this here. And we sketched this out, and it shows two graphs to fit the data. We must shift, uh, the graph must be shifted vertically, it must be shifted horizontally, and it must be stretched horizontally. So as we go over here to step two, step two, if you can see this, we want to determine the vertical shift by finding the average range, or the average of the height, excuse me, the average of the highest and the lowest data value. So we want to find the average of that. So it's like you're taking the mean of both of these things. And the vertical shift is going to equal to 73.5 plus 29.7 degrees. Divided by two, and we come with a mean or an average, the average temperature in this particular group between these two pieces of information, 51.6. So now we're going to superimpose the graph. Y is equal to, now guess what this is? This is actually what? What does this represent on the graph here? This represents basically a vertical shift. It's going to represent a vertical shift, isn't it? Right? Going into what? up this way in the positive direction, right? So basically y is equal to 21.9 sine x plus 51.6. Now, 
Look at figure 1C. This is what we have here, figure 1C, all right? And so we see how we superpose this graph onto here, and this is represented by that. If we go to step three, it is easy to find the horizontal stretch factor because first, you know, since the, the temperature repeats every 12 months, and the period of the function, let's find the period, that's going to be t is equal to 12. So t is equal to 12, well, 2 pi over omega, which is 12. We're going to have to find what omega is because we got to find that, you know, we have to find that portion of the, of the equation. So we do this by multiplying omega to both sides of the equation. And of course, when we do this, do the simple uh, solving for the variable here, we're going to end up with omega is going to equal to what? Pi over 6. So here, we're going to plug this in, and this is where omega is represented. Remember, we're representing what? Y is equal to, in this particular case, what was that function there? That function here is going to be this. Y is equal to A times sine omega times x, right? Omega times x, in this particular case, minus what? We got, we have, we're going to have a little bit of a phase shift here, right? Or phi. And so this is what we're representing. So this here is, is omega. And don't forget, we're going to do a plus b right there. That's what's going to be happening with this one here. So we're going to see this taking place in just a second. And so as we go and we see what we are doing, take a look at here, take some notes here, and see what's being done. Okay, now we're gonna superimpose this graph right here. We're gonna superimpose the graph, which is 21.9 sine omega, which is pi over six x plus 51.6 on uh, the, the scatter plot. So, and then of course, in step four, step four, we're going to determine the horizontal shift. You can see that. And use the period t is equal to 12 and divide that into what? Remember what we did in the basic problems? We're going to, we're going to divide the intervals into, into four. Zero plus three is equal to three. Okay. And then three plus Three is equal to six, and six plus three is equal to nine, and nine plus three is equal to 12. So we have zero, and we have three, and we have three and six. We have six and nine, and we have nine and 12. So the sine curve is increasing on the interval. If you notice the graph, the sine curve is increasing on the interval of zero to three, and decreasing from what? Three to nine. So the local maximum occurs at what? X is equal to what? Three, as you see on the graph right here, that is gonna be the local maximum. And or from the data though, it indicates that the maximum occurs at seven, but corresponding to July's temperature, so we must shift the graph of the function to four units to the right, what do we do? This is gonna be by replacing X minus four, we're gonna get what? y is equal to 21.9 uh, sine times 6 pi over 6 times, here we go, we're plugging this in, x minus 4 plus 51.6. So we simplify by distributing pi over 6 to each term inside the what? Now, once we distribute this particular expression here, y is equal to 21.9 sine times pi, over six times x minus four, right, plus 51.6. It's about distributing pi over six to each of the terms inside of the parentheses here. So we come up with what? Y is equal to 21.9 sine, and this will be pi over six x minus two pi over three plus 51.6. And of course, now this function y is equal to 21.9 sine, which is going to be pi over 6, x minus 2 pi over 3, plus 51.6, will fit the data on the scatter plot. So this is what we have right here. This is what it looks like. This is how it's fitted. All from the transition from the beginning and being uh, fitted and uh, stretched horizontally 
spherically. And this is what we come up with. This is how this is done. We will do future problems like this to come. Thank you for watching this application.